right, we are going to move into proving the derivative of sine and cosine and applying those derivatives. So we'll focus on those two in this video. Uh, we will then derive tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant at a later date. So the first thing is we're going to look at the graphs of each derivative, and we're going to use the difference quotient, which is the limit definition of the derivative, to derive the formulas. We're going to need some trig help and knowledge, but that's okay. So to take the derivative of sine, that is our goal, our goal statement is to find the derivative with respect to x of sine of x. So we're going to start by doing this graphically. And we're going to start by looking at a graph of sine of x. Well, sine of x starts at 0, 0, completes one period in 2 pi. And then remember, a period is like a little stamp on your graph. So here would be a graph of sine of x. I'm going to go to Desmos. Let's double check. Oh, look at that. We know how to graph sine of x. Great. So there's my graph of sine. Squiggle, squiggle, squiggle. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Nice smooth curve. Going to be differentiable everywhere. All right, we're going to let Desmos do a little bit of work for us. And we're going to look at what does f prime look like. Here it is. Let's go back to our graph, though, and see if we can sketch in and make sense of this. So if I think about graphing the derivative, right, so let's say sine of x was equal to f of x, then I want to graph f prime on this coordinate grid. Well, anywhere that I have a slope of 0, I'm now going to touch the x-axis. Here, I have a positive slope. Here, I have a negative slope of equal steepness, but this one is going to be at positive 1. This one will be at negative 1. I'm just using what I saw on my graph, positive 1 and negative 1. And then negative 1, and then positive 1. And so it looks to me like f prime of x, a trig function that has a period of 2 pi, that has a coordinate of 0, 1, hmm, the derivative of sine is actually cosine. Specifically, the derivative with respect to x of sine of x is equal to cosine of x. We're going to start changing those inputs, those arguments, later on. But right now, we just need the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. And that's your proof by a graph. Ooh, where'd my graph go? There it is. So the black one is the original. And f prime is the derivative. And when I go to graph g of x, g of x takes the place of g prime. Cosine is the derivative of sine. Okay, now let's talk about the actual proof. I'm going to derive this with a limit. It's going to be messy, but it's going to be great, and you can follow along, and I believe in you. The derivative with respect to x of sine of x, if I think about my limit definition, we're going to see if my stylus can stick it out. The limit as h approaches 0 sine of x plus h minus sine of x all over h. And direct substitution leads me to oh, 0 over 0. Shock, gasp, ah. Oh. Well, I'm going to use sum and difference formulas. In this case, the sum formula from pre-calc life. It's the reason why we take trigonometry. It's the reason why we take all of our math classes before calculus. The sine of x plus h is the sine of x times the cosine of h plus the cosine of x times the sine of h. I'm just applying the formula all over whoop, h. And then I still have this minus sine of x hanging out over here. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to do some restructuring and some regrouping. I'm going to take this guy and this guy. I'm going to move them to have it be minus sine x plus sine x cosine h. And then this guy is going to stay as cosine of x sine of h. Okay, so promise didn't break any rules of mathematics. This is all still over h. And I still have my limit as h approaches 0. So the next thing, I'm going to think about this as two separate limits. 
this green limit, the limit as h approaches 0, cosine of x times sine of h over h minus, I don't want to use yellow, that's not going to go well, let's go with red, minus don't like that minus sign. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Red. We'll do plus the limit as h approaches 0, negative sine x plus sine x cosine of h all over h. Okay, so using limit properties, I broke up my limits into an addition problem. And then we have these two special limits that are listed here. And you might be like, what? We've never even seen those. And you're right, because we no longer require learning the squeeze theorem in our Calc 1 class. But this is a proof. It's a theorem that's proved by something called the squeeze theorem or the sandwich theorem. Then as this result, using trig identities, we can also prove this theorem. For the purpose of this video, you are going to take my word for it. So let's think about how we can apply one of those formulas to this green limit. Well, the first thing is cosine of x is not dependent on h at all. So I can take out the cosine of x and multiply the limit as h goes to 0, sine of h over h. This is then this fact right here, x, 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 but we have h, 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 all the same. This whole limit is just 1. And so I'm left with cosine of x from this first limit. The red limit's a little bit harder to see. I'm going to factor out a negative 1, or sorry, a negative sine, rather. So if I take out a negative sine of x in the numerator, I'm left with 1 minus cosine of h all over h. Just like before, this is not dependent on h. So limit properties say that I can take that out. Now I have the limit as h approaches 0, 1 minus cosine of h all over h. That's this mathematical fact right here. This whole thing becomes a giant 0. Negative sine of x times 0, the whole thing becomes a giant 0. Oh no, my computer's panicking. And this whole long, messy limit ended up being cosine of x. And if you're like, well, yeah, we saw that with the graph. You're right, but it can be proved analytically using our trig identities and some special limit theorems. All right, so let's talk this time. Maybe. Hold on, my slide's not changing. There you go. Let's talk this time about the derivative with respect to x of cosine of x. And if you're thinking, well, it's probably sine, you are close, oh so close. Let's think about our cosine graph. Cosine starts up high, drops down low, and completes one, wow, my stylus, that is rough. Let's try that again. Starts up high, drops down low, completes one period in two pi, repeats on the back end. So if I go to Desmos, and I look at my graph of cosine, there it is, squiggle, 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 differential everywhere, how beautiful, amplitude, negative one to one, all that good stuff. Well, let's think then about sketching in a derivative. This, this, and this, these points, which will repeat every uh, half period in this case, or every period for the high points, every period for the low points, have slopes of zero because baby horizontal tangent lines so I'm going to move all of those down to the zeros. Here I have that positive one slope, but here I have that negative one slope. So I have a slope that's positive one, a slope that's negative one. This is one period, and I can continue that on, of my derivative. So if my original function f of x was cosine, f prime is not actually sine f prime takes our original sine function but flips it over the x-axis. So f prime is negative sine of x. The derivative with respect to x of the cosine of x is equal to negative sine x. Let's take a look. There's my g prime. 
that was my original cosine. When I go to put sine on, see, it's not lining up. What I need it to do is to be the, oh, I have this all set and ready to go, the negative sine of x. Now, and toggle back and forth between negative sine of x and g prime of x, they represent the same thing. Am I going to make you prove the whole other one? No! It's all typed there if you want to look at it, though. It's a very similar process. Notice at the end, we get to our special trig limits. You do not need to know those special trig limits. They are helpful for proving things, but we are not asking you to prove these trig derivatives. We end up with the derivative of cosine is equal to negative sine. Let's try these two problems. I want to take the derivative with respect to x of 5 times cosine of x. Well, 5 represents the constant multiple. It's just a vertical stretch of the cosine. So 5 is just going to hang out times the derivative of cosine we just said is negative sine. So final answer, negative 5 sine of x, and we're done. This next one, take the derivative with respect to x of 6x plus sine x. Well, because I'm separated by addition, I can just use the power rule for this one. The derivative of 6x is just 6. You can think about it as 6x to the first, swing the 1 down, 6 times x to the 0, x to the 0 is just 1. Also, you could think about it as this, this is a line of 6x, and this line has a constant slope of 6. Everything checks out in mathematics. Plus, the derivative of sine is cosine. Final answer. Final note on some derivative notation. Just a reminder, d dx means you are taking the derivative versus dy dx is a noun. That's a thing. That is the derivative. That's a noun. This is taking the derivative. That's an action word, a verb. Also, final notes, d dx and things like dy dx, these come from Leibniz who was a mathematician, one of the founders of calculus. We also refer to these notations as prime notation. So you've got Leibniz notation and you've got prime notation. Just so we all have a nice visual, here's Leibniz in all of his glory with his wig. We'll talk about him, we'll talk about Newton as the days progress. But that's it. The derivative of sine is cosine. The derivative of cosine is the opposite of sine.